All right, what up, y'all? Um, Survivor Series has it came and went. You feel me? Um, I have some problems, and I have some some really great things that happened on this show. I don't think this was an all bad show, but it definitely wasn't an all good show. Um, the first two matches completely knocked me off of like the hype I was at um, for different reasons. One person I want to speak to first, um, Nia Jax. She was the first person to start off the uh, War Games match for the women. Don't know why. Why She was out there wrestling tonight. Like, she didn't want to wrestle or she didn't know, like, what to do. And that carried over to what happened when Naomi got in the ring. And Bailey was already in the ring with, with Nia, so Bailey wasn't doing much of anything. It was like Nia was set out there to be the, the tone setter for some reason. And her tone was, I'm not going to hit very hard. So the rest of the women, until Tiffany and Io got into the ring, didn't hit very hard. So we're sitting there watching this match, and I'm like, there's something off here. You know? And this carried over, like I said, until Tiffany and Io got in the ring. Tiffany and Io were the only people hitting each other, like hitting hard, as if they wanted to win a War Games match. And then, like, for that, that last, like, I'll say 10 minutes of the match. Then it finally started to pick up when Liv and Rhea got in the ring. But the first half of this match, I'll, I'll say like the first 75% of this match was just them weak, weak chair shots and weak shots. I'm like, what are, what are y'all doing? It doesn't feel like war games. It feels like y'all in there just messing around. And I'm harboring on this early because this set the tone for the rest of the match. And then this set the tone for the second half. LA Knight came out. The crowd didn't pop the way they usually do. The crowd usually get hyped on SmackDown when night come out. The crowd was, was dropped down because of how just lackluster the damn War Games match was. And it's disappointing because I love most of the women in this match. I have no problem with 95% of the women in this, women in this match. And the problems that I do have with the other women, you know, it's not like them personally. It's just their creative has been trash. Like I've been saying, Nia Jax is getting pinned every damn week. And no, do not compare this to Liv Morgan getting pinned because this is the first time Liv has gotten pinned and I don't know, I don't know how long actually. But Nia has gotten pinned. She just got pinned on Raw. <laughs> Ain't has gotten pinned by Bailey and Naomi and Bailey and Naomi. Like I made this video already. I, I know people try to start a comparisons. Do not. Okay, just say you hate Liv Morgan and move on. Please, miss me with that. Now, going back to just the tempo of this match. We should not have gotten to the point where, first of all, where Nia was starting this match off. We should have started off with, with someone who is, is a lot more high tempo. You feel me? Nia's wrestling archetype is not the way you should kick off a War Games match. She should have came in at the end. She's, the, she's one of the world champions. She should have came out at the end and been one of the enforcers to come out there and just beat down on the women who were already hurt. We have her come out there and kick off the, mat, the, the whole match. She lowered the tempo for everyone. It was like everyone saw Nia wrestling like that, and they're like, oh, I guess we got to wrestle like that too. I'm sitting there like, what the fuck? And, I, and I'm watching this on stream in my chat, and, and my, my chat is usually like talking during the match. They're not saying nothing. I'm not saying nothing. And I, I'm like, uh, is this match like slow? Like, what's happening? And then they finally start, because they didn't want to say nothing. But I'm like, I don't want to say nothing. I don't want to seem like I'm hating, but I'm like, I don't like this match, you know? And it starts off with the two in the ring. And you may be saying, oh, why aren't you talking about Bailey? Because Bailey wasn't the one out there just not acting like she wanted to win a match. Nia Jax was. So not only is Nia Jax getting pinned every week, but now she's going out to these War Games matches or this War Games match and acting like she didn't want to swing a steel chair, giving the Hulk Hogan chair shots. I'm like, all right, bro. Like, like come on. This is why I wanted Tiffany Stratton to have this championship tonight. I want her to catch it. Because Nia Jax, to me, I know. Let me get this out of the way before I say what I'm going to say. Has she gotten better? Absolutely. But the reason why I've never liked Nia Jax for all of these years is because it seems like she, some, some days she wants to wrestle, other days she doesn't. And I've, I've always gotten that vibe about her. And I don't care what theme song she has, what championship, she, damn finisher she gets, it doesn't matter. Nia Jax always wrestles as if she either really wants to go out there and do it, but if she doesn't want to go out there and do it, she will not. 
And we saw that tonight. You can't excuse her performance tonight. And I'm harping on her, one, because, because again, she started the War Games match and she's the women's champion. So she should be the leader, the example of the SmackDown roster. How the hell you, how are you the example of you out there doing shit like that? How? It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't make much sense. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't make much sense in the in the in the long term, because how are you supposed to tell me that this is the leader of your division? You're the undisputed women's champion or whatever they call the women's champion. Let's make that. It goes Nia Jackson, everybody else. How am I supposed to believe that if you're out there wrestling like that? And then for it to trickle down to where Naomi's wrestling like she don't want to be there and Bailey. And then it's like, the match didn't pick up, like I said, until Tiffany and EO started hitting each other for real. And then Liv and Rhea started doing what they do, you know? Now, going into the finish, uh, Rhea Ripley with an amazing riptide through a table to Liv Morgan. Pin Liv Morgan. Um, y'all know how I feel about champions getting pinned. We, we talked about it earlier. I don't see a reason for champions to get pinned if they're not losing the, t- the title. You know what I'm saying? That same exa- That same reasoning came up when... The show was over, and I, it, I think it was, I, I don't know who, I, I don't know if it was Jackie or Kelly, um, Kathy, I can't remember. But um, they interviewed Raquel and Liv, and, uh, and Liv's laying there on the thing. She's hurt, you know what I'm saying? Her back's hurt. And Raquel's like, well, she's still the women's champion. And that's the problem. She don't look like the women's champion. She looked like she just got all her sonic rings knocked out of her. You know what I'm saying? But she's still the champion. And they had Liv, like, she was laying on the bin, and she held the championship up. I, it was funny, but I'm like, she doesn't look like the world champion. You feel me? And these are the reasons why we don't have champions get pinned. Because you have these weak champions go out there. They're still holding the belt after getting their ass beat. So how am I supposed to believe in you? As much as I love Liv Morgan. And I made a whole video talk about why Nia Jax shouldn't be getting pinned as much. And I don't even like Nia Jax, but I still felt bad. You know? But, yeah, the, the women's war games match, the, the last five to seven minutes were cool, but 75 to 80 percent of this match was completely terrible. And I'm putting the blame on Nia Jax because, like I said, she's a champion. She should be the example. And she kicked off this match. And those steel chair shots were horrendous. And then you had L.A. Knight versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, again, not a bad match. It, it, I felt like I was watching a SmackDown match. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't nothing crazy. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura freaking won. I popped for that because I did not think Shinsuke was going to win. Um, I know some people aren't very happy with Shinsuke winning. And, and while I'm not overjoyed that Shinsuke won, I understand what they're doing. I understand that Shinsuke's gimmick is pretty much the same as it was before he left. Um, they just gave him a new color, a new theme song. He has some face paint. It's not that much a difference from his original, well, not his original, but his last gimmick when he was taking on Rollins and Cody Rhodes. Um, but I feel like at some point during that, they wanted Shinsuke to get a big win, but they just couldn't fit one in. So they were like, all right, we're going to try our best to make sure that Shinsuke's happy and we're going to give him this match here. You know, the game didn't. The theme song they had tonight was different than the one on SmackDown. So, and I kind of like this one more. You know what I'm saying? But they gave him this match tonight. He beat Knight. Um, again, I definitely would have preferred if it went to Carmelo Hayes or Andrade. Because they put on, I'll say six. Because I think that last match was terrible. but Because um, Knight kind of ruined it. But um, they put on six amazing TV for free matches. You know, for, and I don't understand how they do that, and neither one of them win the championship afterwards. That that's the thing that doesn't that's, that's not really clicking in my head. But we're here now. Shinsuke has it. Hopefully, they can do something with him because a lot of people are giving the hell up on Shinsuke, and I don't want to give up on Shinsuke, but I understand why people are because, to be honest with you, this company is seven years late on actually pushing this man. Now, that, that really isn't Triple H's fault because Triple H just got here. But at the same time, the situation we're at now, we can't keep bringing up the past. We can't bring up, oh, you know what I'm saying? We have to look at the future. And the future is they're trying to build Shinsuke back up again. 
Am I on board? I, I, can, I, I can try to be, you know. I'm on board with the building up of Shinsuke. That's why I understood the win, you know. I was like, all right, you have to put the belt on him now. If you're trying to make it seem like he's a new character, you got to do it. You have to. Now, was LA Knight's championship run the best? No, but I think it was good for a start, you know. It wasn't a trash title run. Would I have expected more? Did I expect more? Yes. Did I want more? Absolutely. But I don't think it was a terrible run, you know. I just hope that Shinsuke knows what he's doing with this, or more so creative, you feel me? Now, next up, we had, disregarding the Bloodline match, well, even, even regarding the Bloodline match, I think this is still my match of the night, kind of, maybe, I don't know. Um, triple threat, Braun Breaker defending against Sheamus and Ludwig Kaiser, amazing match. This brought the intensity back to the show. This should have kicked off the night. It, it probably would have softened the blow of how bad that damn women's war games match was. But um, amazing triple threat. Braun retained. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't have a problem with Ludwig Kaiser. And I, of course, never have a problem with Sheamus. Um, I just think that Braun needs to have a championship run that at least gets into triple digits. You know, he was champion for like 50 some days. Then the company hot shot at the belt on, on Jay because Twitter that championship run ended in 27 days like I told everyone it would because there was no reason to put a solo belt on Jay at this point or damn near any point, but, you know, got it. And then they put the belt back on Braun, and we're here now. There's no reason for Sheamus to do it now. If Sheamus was going to win this championship, which I do think he should at some point, it should be well into Braun's reign. At least let him get to 100 some days, please. At least let him break Sammy's record of 118 I think I think Sam was at 118 something like that um and then move on from there Sheamus could win at WrestleMania that would be great have Braun hold the championship from now to WrestleMania that would be a great run Sheamus wins it he gets his WrestleMania moment wins the championship and we're good and then Braun moves on it, it, you know what I'm saying Kaiser, I'm not really looking at Kaiser being a single champion right now. I think he needs a lot more development. Not so much as a wrestler. I think he's a great wrestler. I think he's a great heel. But just as far as him being an actual contender. Because getting to this match, all he really did was feud with Sheamus and interrupt the Braun and Sheamus match. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I think I need to see more of Ludwig by himself and not just like, oh, I'm still Gunther's homeboy. You know what I'm saying? I need to see more of what he can do on his own. And then we can talk about him being IC champion. You understand? Yeah, this was a freaking awesome match. Very happy with the result. Um, Sheamus definitely should be the new IC champion. The next IC champion, I should say. Um, just well into Braun's reign. Give Braun. I, we cannot keep using the excuse. Oh, Braun's young, so we can know. Anything can happen. Braun's, anything, God forbid, can happen to Braun Breaker. You know what I'm saying? We can't just say, oh, he's young, so he deserves to have bad title runs. That makes no sense. In fact, because of how young Braun is, you should be trying to get everything out of him right now because he's already this good. If he develops to get better, are you kidding me? He's already a damn robot. If Braun Breaker gets better than what he is now, which I assume he will as he just learns more, he's already a WrestleMania main event to me. I, I, I hope so. I see it. I saw it in, in early NXT. You know what I'm saying? He's a damn he's a damn monster, bro. But yeah, Brian Breaker's the man. If you didn't know, now you know. You know what I'm saying? Um, then we had Gunther versus Damian Priest. Um, they're trying to tell the story of Gunther kind of losing his mojo because he lost to Cody and stuff like that. I'm not really with the whole Gunther losing his swag story because like Gunther's too damn good to like get his equilibrium locked knocked off because of a few losses. I just don't think, you know. And especially Crown Jewel, and Crown Jewel is historically not canon, so I don't want any Crown Jewel plots leaking over to canon pay-per-views like Survivor Series, you know what I'm saying? But I see what they try to do. Thank God Gunther retained. Um, this is a cool match, you know what I'm saying? I love when Gunther gets to that point where, like, he's like, all right, my regular wrestling isn't going to win. I have to, like, find a limb and then attack that. Because once he does that, the match is damn near over. If you let Gunther get a limb attack on you, and he starts breaking down your arm or breaking down your back, breaking down your leg, you're done. Because you know at some point in the match, you're going to need your arm or your leg. And once that breaks down, submission, once you, you, you're not, you're done. That's just why Gunther is so damn good. 
If someone walked up to me and said, hey, I think Gunther is the best wrestler in the world today, I can't say they're wrong because he's technical and he's powerful. And he reminds me of what wrestling was when I was introduced to it. You know what I'm saying? I love that. Gunther is what real graps is. You feel me? I said this in my video earlier. Um, I haven't believed in Damian Priest since 2021, 2022, whenever he was doing that Damian Demon in me bull. Um, and I know it's 2024 now, damn near 2025. But every time I look at him, I can't shake that feeling of, of that, you know. So that's just a personal thing. It doesn't have to do with anything else. He's still a great talent. I just I can't see him as a world champion if someone were to ask me personally. Um, obviously, we're going to another Damien and Finn match because Finn interfered in this match. Gunther kicked the hell out of him for it. I'm like, why you kick Finn? He kind of helped you, Gunther. Damn, he Gunther got the big boot on Finn. You know what I'm saying? Um, they did a whole top rope spot. Gunther fell off. Damon fell to the outside. Finn came out through the crowd. Coup de growl. Boom. Gunther saw that and said, what, what you doing trying to help me? <laughs> Why you helping me? Booted the hell out of him. Gets Damien in the ring. At that point, game over. You know what I'm saying? Um, locked in a submission, and it was night-night time. You feel me? Um so, yeah, Gunther retain. I, I'm fine with a Gunther retain any way I can get it. Um, I don't think he should lose that championship until John Cena beats him for it. That's my prediction. Um, or Braun Breaker, for that matter, you know. But that's just how I feel about Gunther. I think Gunther is just – Gunther and Braun Breaker are in my, my very small circle of, like, y'all are keeping wrestling alive in my head right now. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm very sensitive about those few, you know what I'm saying? Um but yeah, cool match. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't nothing crazy, but I, I enjoyed it. You know what I'm saying? And especially I enjoyed the result. And then we had men's war games. Men's war games. Um, this was awesome. This was awesome. You know, and I think mainly because there's a huge story. Of course, the bloodline story has been going on since Roman came back. What was that? 2020? Something like that. Um... This story building up to this point, Roman's bloodline versus Solo's bloodline, Punk joining Team Roman just just this one time. Punk said that probably like four times tonight. Um, Bronson Reed joining Solo's bloodline and that just fitting completely. I don't know how in the world they made that work, but damn it, it worked perfectly. Um, I want to say this, though. There's, there was one standout in this match to me. One person who I I don't think he can do anything wrong. Jacob Fatu, man. And he got a little messed up during the night. I'm not sure if he's actually hurt. I hope to God he's not. He At, at some point, I think he tried to go for another moonsault. And he like, the camera didn't get, get all of it. But like he clipped his knee on the rope or something like that. Or landed on his knee pretty bad. But he was limping for the rest of the match. I hope he's just selling. I don't know if he was. I can't really tell. Um... But it definitely looked like he got pretty, he got hurt pretty bad. So hopefully he's okay. Um, I think he he was just in a walking boot like a few months ago. So this kind of sucks. But hopefully it's no not like a muscle tear or nothing like that. You know, um, at the most, hopefully it's a sprain at least. I that's the I I hope it's not anything else. You know what I'm saying? Because he'll be out for an extended amount of time, and he is the he's the energy that the new bloodline needed. Solo, I'm not too big on Solo. Tama Tonga, he's cool. Tonga Loa doesn't do anything. Bronson Reed just got there. Jacob Fatu is the energy that the new bloodline needed. So if they lose him for an extended amount of time, we might be in a point where this bloodline story starts to fall off like it did before Sami Zayn came in. You know what I'm saying? And we can't have that, you know. Um, but hopefully, prayers to Jacob Fatu. Hopefully, he's okay. Um but yeah, man, this match was freaking awesome. The, the high spots were great. Um, Jimmy did an amazing Uso splash off the top cage. I jumped up for that. Um, this was just a really, really, really great match. And the story completely coincided. Um, Solo Sokoa got every finisher <laughs> damn near um, from all the OG Bloodline and CM Punk. Um, Sami Zayn was... he. Sami Zayn was just like kind of dare this match, you know? Like... I, he was he was there, but like he wasn't like a prominent figure like he was last year. You know what I'm saying? But for obvious reasons, um, Sammy was still trying to prove himself to Roman Reigns. But um, 
CM Punk did great. I didn't I didn't know how good CM Punk was going to do in that war games match. He did a very good job, you know. Um, he getting old, but he still got a lot left in the tank, and I, I I don't like him, but I will respect that. And you know, Roman Reigns does what he does. I, I love the fact that he uh, dove the little crossbody onto uh, all of the new bloodline. I thought that was freaking awesome. I was hoping once he got to the top of the cage, because Solo locked the cage door so Roman couldn't get in. They're like, oh, how is he going to get in? Then Roman was like, oh, this is a cage. I could just climb this. You know what I'm saying? We're like, climbed it. You know what I'm saying? But he gets to the top. I was hoping that he, like, jumped off that shit. But, you know, I was beg- asking for too much. Um, he knocks Tama and Tonga off the damn cage. Gets to the top turnbuckle, crossbody off. I pop for that because Roman doing high spots is, at this point is still very fun for me. Just see him do that. Um, but, yeah, this is the men's war game match was, was very good. I have no concerns only really about Jacob Batu's health. Um, but yeah, cool match, great ending. I love, I love the fact that they had the OG Bloodline win. Um, and they're still trying to tell the story of what is the favor that CM Punk asked for Paul and Punk and Roman. They shook hands, but they're not good, you know. So we might see a Punk and Roman match happen at some point, which I'm on board for. Um, only thing with this, in the end of the match came and they posed like three, four times. They were stalling. I don't even think they showed, like, the, the signature car, like, Survivor Series is going to go off. I don't think they showed that. You know what I'm saying? They stalled as if someone was going to come out. I was hoping for Rock to come out. Rock did not come out. But they were stalling as if he was going to. I'm sitting there like, uh, what are we doing? Like, they were just waiting. It was like they, they were, they did, like, three different freaking camera shots, like, photo shoots. And I'm like, is, is someone going to come out? And then they would pan over to the, uh, they would do, like, a wide shot. And I'm thinking, is Rock's music going to hit? Are we going to see? No, is Rock going to just walk out? You know, they did nothing. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of disappointing, you know what I'm saying? Um, it didn't take away from how good the match was. It was just a little disappointment thing for me. But, um, yeah, war games, you know what I'm saying? I... That the main event was great. The last three matches of this show were perfect. It was just those first two pissed me off because like you kicking off a pay per view like that, no bueno. I, I I can't I can't get with it. You feel me? But um yeah man for the rest of this um the rest of the show was cool. It's just I I I can't get over how bad that women's war games match because I I wanted to be good. I really wanted it to be good, and there's no reason why I shouldn't have been good. Um except for what was happening in the actual match. Plus, this gives ammunition to the people who don't think the women should have had a war games match. And I, I'm going to be completely fair with this. Do I understand why people thought the women shouldn't get a war games match? Absolutely. Because the story in the men's war games match was nothing compared to what the, the story with the women's war games match was. Was there a story? Yes, but it was very minimal compared to the bloodline. Now, you could say, well, every story is going to be minimal to the bloodline. The bloodline has been cooking for five, six years now. That can be cool, all fine and dandy. But if you knew that you were going to do a women's war games match five, six months out, you should have used those five, six months to build up a story which meant, which needed a war games match. You know what I'm saying? Because you can say there was, no, there was no reason for Nia to go out there and start hitting them like, like she was supposed to like hate everyone, you know what I'm saying? Because there's no story. There's no story for her to be this angry, you know what I'm saying? In the Bloodline story, there's reason for every superstar in there to be angry at one another, you know? Or to be angry at the other team. The women's war games match, while there was a story, it was very minimal. There wasn't a lot of heat to it. So the match is not going to have a lot of heat to it. You know what I'm saying? So as much as I blame Nia Jax in the beginning, I can't really blame her that much because they didn't give her much to do. They didn't give her much to, much to go with. All her heat was with Tiffany, maybe.